All right, so I have the beautiful box here. It's a really nice, thick, sturdy craft box that was um, Esme sent the the design products in. And what I've done is I've cut a circle, well, sorry, an oval out of the top of the box. And the way I did that was I turned it upside down and I have these old shape cutters. This is an oval. I've used that on top of it. I've put it on a cutting mat, of course, and gone around it several times. But the blades... Um, let me just show you the blades for these cutting things the blade is ever so small so it doesn't go all the way through the cardboard so what I did so I would get so I would get my oval in exactly the same place on the opposite side was on on each side there and each side here what I did was I got I got a pin or a you know a strong pin or something and I pushed it through like see how I've got little bits of tape there I went directly opposite that and pushed it through to the other side and pushed it through there to the other side did the same here and the same here so that when I turned my box the other way I had four little tiny pinholes so I could line this up in exactly the same place on top and very gently cut my circle out from this side then and it had to be gentle because I couldn't have a mat straight under it because it's deep but it worked it worked very well and so now I've got this um, very nice oval cut out of my box so I can put some acetate in there and look through and and see the pretty things in there I can also use the oval for something else because it's a really nice thick oval now what I'm going to do before I do anything else is paint the box and I've taken out the three lighter colors here uh, I've got white I've got antique white and I've got this one which is called eggshell and I think this is what I'm going to go with I think that will look very nice so I'm going to go ahead and completely paint the box and then I'll be back Okay, so the box is all painted up. Um, I did want to mention that, of course, if you don't have a tool for cutting, you know, a precise hole in a lid like that, all you have to do is trace around a shape and then just get your, your cutting knife or your blade, you know, these sorts of things and carefully cut it. Once you've cut it out, even if you're using a cutting tool, just get your trusty nail file and smooth all the edges on both the, the outside and on the inside just so it's nice and smooth and it looks nice and tidy. Most of the time when you, um, you decorate a box with a hole in it like this you're going to probably have lace overhanging or a trim overhanging in some way around the edge anyway so you may not need it exactly perfect so don't let it put you off if you don't have a, a cutting tool to cut a hole in a box it's easy to get around okay so I gave that a couple of coats it's not perfect but it is going to be covered with lace so as long as um, the color is coming through that's fine and I thought I would use this beautiful wide trim that Esme sent from Crafty Me Shop isn't it just gorgeous look at that corded lace absolutely beautiful and I thought this let me get to this end I thought this curve lends itself perfectly to going around the curve of the oval so I haven't given it too much thought as yet um, the color just peeks through which is what I want which is perfect 
so I like I said I haven't you know put a lot of thought this is just what I've been thinking about and I don't I don't want to kind of um, take forever making decisions so I will put this as the base and that of course will you know go on that side like that so we'll just have a bit of a play before I start cutting because I will have to put glue at the back of the lace before I cut it just where I'm going to cut it on either side so I don't lose the beautiful pearls and sequins coming off it so that oh, is it? oh here hang on okay here we go and I will be using hot glue to put this on I think um, because it is a hard surface so it doesn't need to stay pliable or anything like that so we'll use that lace for that and that will leave me with some left over as well um, what else are we going to use I've pulled out the colors and things that you know complement that one um, and I did put everything in bags so I didn't have it displayed all around my desk here um, okay so I've put out this lovely dainty one here whether I use all these or not I don't know I've got this one here that's beautiful isn't it and it's like two-tone and I really like that can you tell that it's like white and lighter and then like just a very winter white on the flowers it's really pretty so um, maybe we can use bits of this in between the gaps here and down the side of the lid because that seems that that could be quite nice on the sides of the lid and I will take this all the right way around to the the rim there now on the base of the box itself I'm going to be using this particular lace here and this is one I purchased from Esme but it's still from Crafty Me Shop so I'm going to put that on the bottom because I want the decoration on the top of the box more than anything and I think that one will be perfect so I will use that one I've also decided I'm going to put some feet on the box and I just I grab my little tray out and I have four of these I don't know what are they glass tiles or something they're really they've got just a slight color going through them and they're curved but they're flat on this side so they will they will be perfect for feet and that will just allow that little bit of scallop to lift off the ground which will be wonderful um, I will probably make a couple of flowers to go on this I have this beautiful applique here look at this isn't this lovely and that might be nice to put on you know to cut apart and put on various parts of the box as well uh, oh and I also thought I might use this absolutely gorgeous piece of bling can you believe how sparkly that is oh that's so beautiful um, and what I thought I might do is make a big flower for one side and have that kind of in the center of the flower and cut the two out pieces off and have it over this side, those two over this side um, not that one with some flowers over here so it's like you know across from each other so I thought I might do that as well uh, I've got to find some acetate to put inside I am um, I did paint I did paint inside but and that's only because I'm not sure if I'm going to cover it inside or not so if I don't cover it inside it's nice and tidy in there so um, I do like the color though it's a it's a real pretty kind of a greeny gray color it's very nice and I did mention what that was didn't it eggshell yes uh, was there anything else I wonder if see actually these I wonder 
Maybe it depends. You see, that looks that's beautiful, isn't it? It's really beautiful. We'll see whether I add some of those. I may add some. I'm not sure. Um, we'll see. Anything else? I think that's about it for the time being. So I'm just waiting for my glue gun to warm up. I accidentally left it on a bit too long and the end of it's gone all like burnt. So I've got to give that a bit of a clean before I do anything. And then I will have to glue the backs where I'm going to cut this because it's all stitched on and I don't want anything falling off. So um, I'll be back once I've pretty much done what I've just said I was going to do. Alright, so that's what I've done so far. I've just glued on the beautiful wide lace around the top of the box there. I've put this beautiful trim on either end and I also put a little bit under here as well just to fill in that gap there. I have cut up this gorgeous applique piece. I think well you can see it's got it's two tone and I do have uh, I think I've got a little bit of that left as well. Where did I put it? Maybe not. Yes I do. Oh here it is. add a little bit more um, you know a, a different a color to it and that's the piece I have left it's like a um, off-white but it's got almost a, a coffee color cording on it it's really really pretty so I've put that here and a piece here just so it's not all the same color oh, Molly so that's what I've glued on so far. Better my glue gun on again. Okay. So now what I thought I would do, I have a little bit of this trim here left. And I thought I have a couple of pieces. I have this piece here. Um and another piece and that's all of that trim oh apart from one little flower and I thought I would I would put a piece here and that other piece can perhaps go like that so it's going around the oval there and then I have used this lovely lace, it's a very dainty little lace and I've just cut um, a couple of uh, probably, it's alright, the building next door, very early though, it's only just gone uh, half past seven. Um, I made three, I cut six inch strips and just made some little gathered flowers and then I have put one of my own little flowers in the center it's still on its wire um, just so I can play with some placement here so maybe like that so I've made a couple of those where's another one here's another one here and so that's the little flower I put in in the center. Um, the next thing I've made is I've gathered up some lace and it's like a half a half circle, like a half flower. And I thought I would use that to add a little bit of height. And that lace is this beautiful lace here. Isn't that beautiful? It's like it's leaves and they're on opposite sides. It's such a soft, beautiful lace. So I use some of that. I, I cut it in half, the actual lace, and then gathered it up. And I 
also like that's how the lace is um, so I've just taken one singular piece and I thought I would just twist it like that to add a little bit of height as well so we'll put that over there and then I have I used this gorgeous lace and this is from crafty me shop also but this wasn't in my design package this is one I purchased it's really really beautiful isn't it so I took some of that and made a flower out of that and I love that lace I think it's beautiful so I might put that there like that and then I've used this gorgeous scalloped wedding trim isn't that wonderful it's really pretty and I think it might be avocado dyed or something it's just got, or tea it's got a slight pink tone to it it's really really beautiful so I've cut some of that and what I thought I would do is I've got two scallops where does that go I've got two scallops and I've gathered them together like that. I didn't want to make like a big flower because it would be too overpowering. So I thought to add um, some more contrast with the colour there. And then I've got one scallop here that I've gathered across the bottom. And that can sort of make up the rest of the inside of the flower there. And it just sort of, you know, you can see the different colours, can't you? So I've done that and then I thought to add a bit to the other side here I've got one scallop there and I will put that like something like that just to bring that color more over there I have an old bit of tulle flower here it was like a rosette flower that I've cut and I might use that over here for a bit of dimension I might this is all what I'm playing with just to give you an idea um, this is one of the beautiful flower appliques that is my scent, so we might use that as a flower over here. Um, I have a couple. Oh, this is a. It's another one of the gathered flowers using that delicate lace, but then I've put it inside um, some lace of my own. Maybe there. No, we might put that over here, like that perhaps. And that's um, that flower of my own was originally like that with the stamens in the centre, so we might use a couple of those as well. And there's another one here, so we'll pop one over here perhaps. I'm not looking down; I'm looking sideways, so if it it's not um, perfect right now. Um. What else? There's that last little flower. Maybe we'll put that somewhere. What else have I got? I've got some just chill tied up. It can be used, I guess, to stick in somewhere. Maybe this could all change. Like that. This is a piece of gorgeous trim, isn't it just beautiful? And it's that flower there, see that joining flower? That's what that is, so I might use that in the center of there. And I've got a couple of these little flowers left from my art dress project so I might use those on there as well just to you know put there and look pretty there's another that's that one there isn't it maybe we can use that there there hard to tell until I kind of stand up and have a little look 
I've cut a few bits of pearl strands up. I thought they are always good to put on projects like this. Just loop them around a bit like that and perhaps tuck those in like that and that's another one over here like that and then I have because of course I still need to do the base of the box the base is still the painted color and I was originally going to use this one, but then I, I wasn't a hundred percent on the way it was looking. And then I thought I have this one as well. And this is one I purchased from Crafty Me Shop, and it's so so pretty, isn't it? It's just really delicate and pretty, and it seems to fit perfectly. And I love the. The whimsical kind of look that it has and it it still shows the color of the box through it as well and I can't tip it up obviously at the moment to show you that uh, maybe if I take the lid off and put that there and that has to sit about an inch down and that's what that will look like and I think that will look very pretty because it finishes the bottom of the box but you're still getting the pretty color coming through if I can find something I don't have any flat back pearls I do have these ones that I used for those little bits so maybe maybe I could finish it off with a pearl strand there as well or maybe some gimp braid if I can find a nice little narrow one in my stash um, and so and I still need to put the acetate in um, maybe I should put the acetate in before I decorate the lid that would be smart Okay, so that's where I'm up to and I'm going to go ahead look for a piece of acetate probably put that in that's just a matter of double-sided tape on that on the under side of the box um, which means I will probably cover inside I probably will cover it inside anyway because I did find that the actual paint does chip off a bit if you're not careful on this box so because it's not a chalk paint it's just an acrylic paint so I probably will um, cover it and just leave the corner bits showing so that the paint wasn't a waste of time okay so I'll go ahead and do that and then I'll come back and show you I'm just lining the lid of the box and I've cut it to size with a little border all the way around and I'm using the beautiful um, decoupage papers and they're little birdie and I got these from witchcraft do you do and all I've done is place that there and then I'm running my finger around the shape of the opening so that when I turn it over I can see exactly where my oval is so if I'm cutting it out by scissors I've got a guideline but if I'm using my cutter, I know exactly where to place it to get the oval cut out. I just thought I'd show you that. And I've also put double-sided tape on a piece of acetate here. And that will go between like that. And what I have decided to do is use a different blade on this particular system. So the hole won't be exactly the same. It will leave a little border of the painted box showing. That way um, it'll, I, I think it'll look nicer that way. And plus it won't, you won't see it from the outside as well. 
These are uh, the creative memories old, well, I don't think that, I think they still sell them actually, the cutting systems. I bought these years and years and years ago when my son was a baby um, for scrapbooking. And of course, they're still very useful today. I mean, very easy to use. So we'll see if that will work. Hopefully. I haven't stuck the acetate down and that's um, scrap acetate that I'm using it's not brand new so see how I've left a little border there and you can do that using scissors as well all you have to do is just cut outside the line a little bit more and that way I get a bit of that paint and what I might do before I stick it down as well is just get my old scissors um, although this is decoupage paper, it's very fragile. I might just give it a, a shabby around the edge. I have to be very careful though because it is it's very delicate paper. I just don't want it so precise, I don't think. Unless I ink it a bit, that might be the other option. Mm -mm, we'll see. I'll let you know what I do. So it has been all finished off. Um, I will go through uh, anything that I didn't talk about before that I decided to add. I did add a sari silk bow and I added a sari silk flower with a flat back pearl and another one over this side as well. If you can see that. I also added, I changed up the flower here. I put another one of these lovely appliques in the center of this flower and I put the the wedding trim, the ruffled wedding trim underneath it rather than on top of it. I have I talked about the flowers, didn't I, that I made. I've got the chul, some half a chul flower under this side over here just to sort of bring this color in so it you know moves around the box a little bit there's my beaded um, a beaded trim there and I've added these lovely sequin flowers they come in a little set of three and I have some here here and once again over here and they were a gift from Michelle and I'll just bring that up so you can see how pretty they are they're really lovely and I think they went well with this box I've added a few pearls glued on just to you know add a bit of interest going around and I've also added in a like little bead clusters with glitter going through it just there over here and once again over here as well now I'm not sure if I have said everything and I'm really happy with the way it turned out I love the way the there's all chill under this side and it just comes across the acetate there if I turn the light out you'll be able to see a little bit just just for a sec can you see the wispiness of how that tool comes out? It's really pretty. And you can see it to the naked eye, but of course on camera, not everything comes out the same way. So, and that is the back of the box there. And the sides. And that is the front of the box. And the inside of the box. is like that just try not to get the glare of the light on there I have stitched all around the paper and inked it uh, just a gentle inking I didn't want it too dark I've stitched on the inside of it as well I've got some uh, cheesecloth tucked under in various places I have the sari silk and some tulle and then I've also done a cluster of the beads here and over here as well and I really like the way that looks you can see the chul just coming through it looks very whimsical and pretty don't you think and that's the inside of the box there I did just line it um, and leaving the green paint showing through and so that's how it looks 
and I'm I'm very happy with it now everything has a little home and so let's put it all back and of course I've put everything into little bags simply because it makes it easier to go through without everything getting tangled and I can find what I'm looking for so much easier So there we go we've got our products all back in there it's still a little bit hard to close because there's still a lot in there to use this was a very generous um, design package so it I'm very very happy with the way this box turned out I can have it sat next to me now and it looks beautiful and puts a smile on my face so I hope you like what I've made and um, enjoyed the how to on how to do it of course you can decorate a box any way you want this just gives you a basic idea on you know how to play around with things but you can cover it with paper you don't have to paint it you can um, cover it in fabric you can just stamp all over it you can use tissue paper you can decoupage napkins on it you can do whatever you want this is just one way to do it so but did I show you the feet I've got the feet on the bottom there and they worked out really well I hope it helped even one person so take care everybody and thank you for watching bye bye